Hello and welcome back to the Angerati studio. I'm now joined by Jens Wegman, who is the uh, Chief Corporate Development Officer. I'm not going to read the rest of it, Jens. You've got the longest job title. You win the prize. <laughs> but you're also a member of the Executive Management Committee of uh, AGT International. Uh, firstly, welcome to the studio. Thank you for being here. And we were uh, talking a little bit off air about um, and what is interesting to me, because we've been running a, a few uh, articles on Angerati around cybersecurity, but that's a very IT-centric mm -hmm. view of security. And uh, people don't tune out yet, this is going to be good. Um, because every time you mention security, people go, oh. But tell me about your view, because you're much more on the physical and people protection and ac asset protection uh, side of things as well, which is, uniquely important in the smart grid and what the smart grid can now add to that whole dimension. Yes. All right. First of all, thanks uh, for, for, for having me here. Yeah. I mean, uh, AGT's focus is around providing solutions uh, for security and uh, public safety with the aim to create business continuity for our clients. Um, I mean, the way we do that is by collecting data from all kinds of uh, devices and uh, basically we collect data from the sensors as well around uh, typical security, I mean access control like a video, intrusion detection, things like which are common. But we merge that with information we get from maintenance systems and operational systems and thus create an entirely new layer of information combined with things we come from the internet, from social media, and the aim is to protect people, processes and assets. Internet and social media. How does that play with all of this? Well, I mean, uh, obviously the uh, social media is developing to kind of a sensor of its kind. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if you have uh, uh, revolutions like you had in Cairo, for instance, I mean, you see the picture from the news uh, on TV, which is a very static one, but if you assess what's going on in social media with Twitter and Facebook, you can predict where the crowd is going to go next, and then you can basically uh, react uh, and inform the forces in place, for instance. Does that also work in uh, disaster scenarios, like I mean, Hurricane Katrina, famously? Uh, uh, you know, if you had a if you had a social layer over the top of that, w you know. I mean, you, you would be surprised what you find when you really dig into what people exchange uh, around the social media. Mm. So this is one type of sensor which we are increasingly uh, using, but that's not the only one. Obviously. The competence of collecting data is one thing, but the competence to collect the relevant data for a particular situation, I think that's what we are good at. And uh, here it's very important that you fuse, we call it fusion, the information you, for instance, get from a social media with, for instance, video screens and pictures you take from what you said, for instance, Katrina crisis management uh, activities and provide an additional, what we call, uh, real-time situational awareness picture. And. Uh the smart grid, mm -hmm. how important is that to have with everything that you do? Right. Well, I mean, the smart grid, I mean, I, I would say it's the brain, it's the intelligence to bring together the uh, supply side, so basically the utilities, now also added on increasingly with the renewables, with the wind, with the solar. And on the other hand, you have the demand side, so the industries and uh, the residentials and, and uh, all, all of these. Uh, so there has to be a balance between uh, demand and supply. So more intelligence goes into the grid, more interfaces, more devices, but that also increases the complexity. So therefore, there's a big requirement to have uh, safety uh, in, installed as well, both on the cyber side as well as on the physical side. So basically, our purpose of us being here today is basically to say we make the smart grid safe. And when you're talking about safe, it, does it cover the entire gamut, like uh, the, the, the cyber security uh, sort of technical safety as well as people safety and asset safety? Yes, if you take a typical, for instance, a substation, I mean, normally it should be fenced in because you're dealing with high or medium voltage, uh, so it's kind of dangerous uh, already. So that means, first of all, you have to have the physical security, which is kind of the intelligent fences, which is kind of uh, needed for intrusion detection. You have video surveillance, you have uh, access control, you have license plate uh, recognition. So this is all the physical aspects. 
You combine that again with information from the internet, for instance, weather information, which is very relevant uh, to protecting uh, your environment. And access control already ensures that when people go on the site, you know who is on the site, how long he is on the site, and whether he is entitled to be on the site. So that is already from a security aspect one point, but also from a safety aspect one point, because you don't want to let people on the site which are not qualified to be there. So that's one aspect. I mean, obviously the other aspect is uh, on, the, on the cyber side. I mean, we increasingly hear that uh, people are attacking uh, the grids and the substations. Mm -hmm. And uh, recently in Finland on TV there was a documentary series basically saying that they attacked five selected substations and within 48 hours they were able to shut down the entire country. Wow. So that means there is a vulnerability and uh, our, our competence is basically to assess these threats, turn it into a solution and basically apply the appropriate technology and we call this CONOPS, Concepts of Operations. So what you're saying is that the more we connect all of this up, because we have to, because mm -hmm. you, you're getting all sorts of different pressures like uh, in, intermittent generation, dis, gen, distributed generation, so you need this connected layer in order to manage it. You can't just keep throwing people at it right. uh, because it, it is. It, so it, the more we connect this up, the more we build new vulnerabilities into the system, but let me not talk about the vulnerabilities again for a second and steer the conversation mm -hmm. in another direction. What are the opportunities? Because I would imagine that there are huge opportunities in terms of uh, operational uh, efficiency, worker safety uh, as well. Yes. Uh, uh, like, you know, what are those sort of things coming out? Actually, this is a very good point because uh, obviously safety and security is uh, priority number one. But then the question is uh, from our clients, well, if I have to invest in this, is there not also a chance for a return of investment, or I like to call it return of security investment when I'm already doing it? So if you install, for instance, a video equipment for security purposes, you can also use it for maintenance. You can have an unmanned site so you don't have to send people anymore, which has an effect on your operational expenses, so cost goes down, and your efficiency goes up, so you can react faster, for instance, out of the maintenance system, you get the information, for instance, uh, transformers overheating. You take that information typically to maintenance, but if you also feed that into your situational awareness picture, you know you may have a safety issue coming up and you can react appropriately, so you increase efficiency. So security first, then increased efficiency and the reduction of cost, and that creates what we call the return of security investment for our clients. And that, that is probably a, a, quite a good way of going in because if you go in entirely on the fear element, yes. like, oh, here's what could happen, here's what yes. could happen, people see it as a cost mm -hmm. rather than an opportunity. Whereas if you go in and say, look, this is what it can do, it, it, this is actually, I'm actually talking to you about yes. operational efficiency and reducing uh, ownership things. In, in, in this respect, um, the challenge is not, of course, it's a technology question which we have answered already for us. The challenge is with, um, on, on our client side and uh, also here around the exhibition I've spoken to uh, quite a number of utility companies. The issue right now is the way they are structured. They are structured uh, in silos. So you have the maintenance department, you have the operations department, you have the automation people with the SCADA system and you have security. So in order to create this additional layer of situational awareness you have to break the silos. You have to make information available, which is already there. So we are not installing necessarily additional sensors. Information is in the maintenance tool, is in the operational tool, but the departments have to start working together. And there are some companies I've learned here that have worked on this since quite some time and uh, making more and more progress. But in this industry, I think the challenge is not only technical, it's a cultural and a behavioral issue which uh, we have to solve together with our clients. And that is almost the last two you mentioned, cultural and behavior. Yes. Those are almost a whole, sometimes anyway, a whole lot harder than the technical challenge. Absolutely. Because, you, because if you can get everybody on the same table very quickly, then delivering up the right technical solution is uh, is is easy. Uh, so one of the questions I was going to ask you on that is, if that is such a barrier. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the sort of messages you're putting out in terms of either helping the companies overcome 
those things. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so if I could ask you to act out, because I would imagine that if you have those silos, you need to give proof points to each silo that it's worth them working with that one, worth them working with that one. So, so what are some of those uh, sort of softer arguments, I suppose? Well, um, obviously you need to have proof points, and proof points you can develop together with a lead customer. And for instance, in Finland, we have a lead customer called Elinia, and together with our local partner, Emtele, we have uh, worked over the last months very intensively, not only on the technical solution, but also on these kind of soft facts, to really outline to the people what kind of benefits they can generate by working across the silos and making information available. So that was not something we did overnight and come in and come out and then you have all your requirements and people all yeah. happy to work together. This is a process uh, where you have to outline what kind of benefit you can create the other way around. I mean, on the sea level, they may understand it very quickly what the return and the impact on the money side is. But on the maintenance level, if you can show them what additional value you can provide, for instance, he can take people off the side from a man to an unmanned side. Uh, he can get faster uh, preventative maintenance relevant information than he had before. That you can leverage what they have in the automation side. So you really have to work proof point by proof point and then establish a relationship on all kinds of layers and then become an integral part of the, the customer's uh, business actually and therefore you need to understand what they're doing. And uh, as we are sort of coming to the end of our time here today, let me ask you another question. Are you are you seeing the need for a skills shift as well? Because I would imagine that if you are, and I use an extreme scenario to illustrate the point, if you're saying, okay, look, we, we can move 80% uh, of our operations to a remote mm -hmm. operational control mm -hmm. system, you need, do you need different skills, different, uh, uh, different people? Is there a, a sort of reskilling opportunity? And is there also a fear by people say, well, hang on a minute, I, I, I don't want all this tech because the old world is keeping yes. me in a job because right. I drive around all day looking at substations. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's an absolutely fair point that goes both for our clients and even for ourselves. I mean, we are a fairly young company, six years old, very agile, very dynamic. And if you look at the uh, quality of people we have, we have not just engineers, we have uh, mathematical people, we have data analysts, we have very high skilled, very smart, intelligent people in our operations, and we bring them to utilities. You can see that there are two worlds which would clash if you don't manage it properly. So, I mean, you have to work very closely with the clients to educate them, not to overwhelm them. I mean, that is really a process which takes some time. And uh, yes, you have to understand what their needs are, what their pain points are. And uh, I think with Antelay, we have done a very good job uh, from the client side and from our side to really develop that. And uh, you're fully right. Um, this new innovation of bringing in uh, more technology, even to the Internet of Things, social media, that really requires a different skill set. And if you see the average age of our employees, it's very young. It's very young, right. very dynamic, very agile. So the utility world is going to get younger? Well, at least uh, I think in the mindsets, they have yeah. to be a lot younger and more dynamic to really make it. I mean, um, utilities have a hard time right now to define where they are going next. And I think to bring this together and help them for the next step in their business model, I think that's yeah, also and a good I, opportunity. I, I, and there were huge uh, uh, conversations around business models and, uh, and things like that, which if I started down that road, we'd be here for uh, for another right, half right, hour. Right, right, right. Maybe maybe, uh, maybe another time. But uh, that's been really fascinating. It's been great talking okay. to you. And uh, thank you as well for watching. Uh, it's been another uh, interview on uh, Engerati from European Utility Week. Uh, if you're watching this, there will be other assets around this uh, video, which uh, and your presentation yes. from earlier on. If our tech is doing the right job, there's a link somewhere. So go and have a look at that. Thank, thanks again. Thank okay, you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.